Good morning everyone. I'm sowing seeds today and this is my seed sowing for August video. Got quite a few to get through. But for those who haven't been here for that long, and I know there's new subscribers joining all the time, and if you are new, welcome. Uh, this is how I go about my seed sowing. I use sieve compost and I put them in trays and then I just make little furrows in the trays so I can get like six, seven varieties of seeds in one little tray. And I always use sieved compost for my seed sowing. Now, if you use compost straight out of the bag and crumble it into a tray and sow seeds into it, you will get results, you will get seeds come out. But with the compost being sieved, it's that finer and it means it can totally surround the seed and totally surround it with moisture so that the seed coat gets equally moist, splits open and germinates. Therefore, you get better germination. The other way, without sieving works and those who purport to use that, they have good results. But with certain seeds, it's more beneficial to sieve the compost. So now I just blanket sieve all my compost for all my seed sowing. So that's where that comes from. And it takes no, no work, it really doesn't. I sieved all this compost yesterday, ready for seed sowing today. And it was a 10 minute job, job done. So right, there we go. So having yourself organized, having your seeds all ready, having the labels all ready, just makes this go so much easier. Let's say today I've got about 40 different seeds to sow. It sounds a tremendous amount. And it is in Maine, really, because I've got a load of old salad lettuce leaves. And I want to test the viability of them, see if they're still viable. If they're not, I can get rid of them. So we'll see what ones germinate. And I know there'll be patchy germination when it comes to the lettuce. And they'll all be sown in this same manner. Um, I've got three trays here, I have another five down there on the floor. So there'll be a lot sown today like this and I'm just palm sowing them into the, into the little furrow and then later on I'll cover these with dry compost and capillary action will fetch the water up to the compost at the top because these are soaked and that way they'll be off and running and especially with this warm weather that we're having at the moment, you know, it's just turned warm today. Yesterday was fairly, fairly chilly. But today and for the next few days, we've got a bit of a heat spell on. So it's a perfect time, I think, to get some seeds so sown. Later on, obviously, as they become of a decent size in these trays, I'll pot them on. And the seeds that I'm sowing here first are, these are like, oriental mustard so i've just done pak choy red pak choy white pak choy green and that's all the stem colors and i've got some mizumas here these are like a chinese mustard leaf some of them can be quite bitter i've got one here this is this one red streak so i've grown this before and to be honest i didn't really like it but i'm trying it again because your tastes will change year on year. At the time when I last grew it, I felt it was just too bitter and I couldn't do anything with it. But we'll try it again and see what we get from it. Now here's one I really like. This one is a mustard common tuna, tender green. I say all the names will be in the description, so don't worry about that. And the leaves on these things are tremendous. They're about this long and you can eat the stem as well. Cut the stem up, cut the leaf off the stem, cut the stem up, fry that for a, a minute, 30 seconds, a minute, and then chuck the leaves in and you've got a lovely stir fry dish. So I grow so many so that I've got the variety in the diet and the choice to cook as ingredients so that Basically through the winter, interest is kept there. We're still eating healthy leafy greens and um, we're enjoying it because no two meals are the same, which to me is fantastic. 
So that one was just a plain Mizuna. And this is, last one is a Tatsoi. Again, it's another mustard. And this one is difficult to get into. Some of these seeds are now fairly old. I've had them, some of them for three years. And as I get my seeds, most of them from Premier Seeds Direct, they cost me a pound a packet. And if you think that's being spread over two or three years, and the 40 odd seeds I'm sowing today cost me 40 pounds over three years. For fresh veg, winter long, you can't really argue with that for those sorts of prices. So that's the, the oriental stuff done. I've got one more smaller oriental stuff. This is my Achilles heel. <laughs> I have a bit of a nightmare with this every year because I'm trying to grow this out of season. But these are Chinese cabbage and they're a lovely crunchy crispy alternative if you can grow them that is now you grow them in the spring and summer absolutely no problem whatsoever you'll grow them and grow them well but what i'm trying to do is get them going in autumn time and grow them on in the polytunnel so that i can be eating them around the christmas time there's plenty of lettuces and stuff that we should grow there i've got crunch to them but I really like the Chinese cabbage. I've always liked it. Um, and I want to grow them for Christmas. And every year I try a different method. I'm, I'm no different this year. I have a different method that I'll be trying this, this year to grow them in the polytunnel. But we'll get to that when we get to planting size, uh, planting time. So this first variety, the one I've just shown, is called Wawa Say and again the varieties will be written in the description i came across this one because order it real food food comes dirty mentioned it because it's a much smaller chinese cabbage than you'd normally see um, and that perked my interest i thought ah smaller if it's going to grow smaller it might grow a little bit quicker and it might be a little bit easier to grow worth a try so that's what i'm doing and i'm growing two other types as well this one is called Michi Healy and that last one is called Wong Bok and I've already got some of them sown in the main tunnel. They're ready to be planted out or potted on and I'm going to continue to do this um, through this summertime into autumn. I'm going to be sowing these fairly, fairly regular to keep a supply of them coming. Actually, those seeds, they've had it. There you go. The dates rubbed off that one as well, but they're, they've got wet and they're rotten. So the Michihili are scrubbed. <laughs> yeah, you can see there's mold, mold on my hands there. So get rid of them and we won't bother with them. The Wong Bok. I'll sow a couple of those, pop the label in, yeah they're better, that's how a seed should come out of a packet, so I'll just fill the rest of this tray with the Wong Bok, and again we'll see how we get on for later in the season when I when I plant them out. So I think I've got a good way of growing them this year, better than I've had before. So we'll give them a try. Now, lettuce, loads to sow. I'm not gonna do these on camera because A, they're gonna be sown exactly the same as those two. Uh, there's not much to say about lettuce. I'll just show you them and then write all the, the names of them in the description, just cause you don't wanna go through me sowing all those, there's tons. So with all those lettuce and things sown, I'm just now going to cover with a bit of dry compost. I say capillary reaction from the soil will draw the moisture up through there, past the seeds, 
which is what we want. And there we go, that's the first stage. Now we're going to sow some, got a couple of locations here in the tunnel to sow in, and then one location outside as well. So still got quite a bit to get done. Now, if this is your first time here, Greenside Up is dedicated to helping gardeners of all levels, ability and experience. So if you remember to subscribe, then I can help you too. And it's the big red button just down here and it's completely free of charge. It just means you get notified when I put a new video out. And you can follow on with all the seed sowing that I'm doing today. Like this one, this is just a mushroom tray with compost in, there's a little bit of a plastic liner underneath it just to hold the, the compost in and I'm just sprinkling some of these seeds on now this is a mixed lettuce from Premier Seeds 99p for the packet so 10 bob for a tray of lettuce and I'll be sowing these every 3 to 4 weeks from now on basically and I'll just keep sowing them because the portable I can just take a whole tray home put it outside the back door or if it's too cold outside in the greenhouse or even on the kitchen table I've done before just we've got fresh lettuce to pick and that's handy when it's those days where it's so cold and the ground is so frozen and it's too icy to drive out it's just too dangerous to go out or you just cannot be bothered to go out in the cold if you've got greens ready to pick apart from all the rest of your stuff and if you've got them at home it's even better so I just sow these and I'll just keep adding another one, as I say, every three to four weeks. I'll just water that and cover them, and that's that job done. So, I'm sowing carrots in this bed. This is the bed where I had all the kale and cabbages and cauliflower, not cauliflowers, purple sprouting broccolis and stuff. A couple of weeks ago, I used it as a seed bed, and... I'm doing pretty much the same thing now, but I'm sowing carrots. And I've got two varieties. This first one is uh, Eskimo. And I'm just going to thinly sow these into this little drill I've just drawn. And then move the stake on. Draw another drill and do the same thing again. This part of sewing just makes life so much easier. There we go. And then I'll just uh, flick some soil back over the top. And then I'll just keep these damp and that's, that's good enough for germination. The soil's already damp, I pre-watered it yesterday. I'll just keep that. I want to keep the soil so I can see it looks like this, so it's damp all the time. Not soaked, just moist, and then we should get germination. I'm a little bit late doing these. Normally I want to be doing these two weeks ago, really, sort of third week in July. But they should come. They might just be after Christmas. Normally I sow these for Christmas. But that's what the other variety is for, the Chantenay. They're a stump-rooted carrot. They grow a lot quicker. And hopefully, I'll do another couple of rows of the Eskimo and then I'll fill the rest of the bed up with the Chantenay and we might get those for Christmas. We'll see. <laughs> so I've started another Brassica seed bed. I've already got two cabbage in here sown that just need covering, a Durham Early and a Greyhound. But I'll stop here because I want to film this. This is a new variety to me. This is called Chinese kale, kale, kaelan kitchi. Now, touted as a kale, but from its description, it's also called the Chinese broccoli. Um, and from its description, as I say, I kind of think it's similar to the broccoli rab that I've grown before. Um, but I'm going to try it. It's touted as good eating qualities and you can steam it and you can eat the stems as well and you harvest it and eat it just as it's going into bud um, it's got green waxy leaves and it looks very similar to a pak choy as well so it's a bit of a mixed up thing 
but I thought we'd give it a go this year and see if it's another ingredient worthy of our winter stir fries and mixes that we like to do through the winter. You know, the more ingredients I've got for through the winter, the happier I, I am being an ex-chef, you know. So we thought we'd give that one a try, the, the <laughs> Kalan Kitchi. And I'm also going to sow um, a couple of rows of cauliflowers and I've got an all year round and an igloo variety. They will come when they're ready, good and ready. I've always found that with cauliflower. They can be in the ground for ages, then the weather turns, goes a bit cooler, and bang, up come the flowers and the curds. So we could get some of these when they're eventually planted out before Christmas. Could even be into next February, you never know. But I'm gonna plant them anyway, get them going. And it just gives me a choice of planters, the summer crops, um, and the beds empty, empty outside. So we'll get those in as well. Now, I have a few more seeds that I'm going to sow in a patch outside. I'm not going to do that on camera. I think this is enough sowing for one video. But I'll just quickly run through them. I've got um, a white Lisbon spring onion. And normally, most people know me as growing the Ishikura bunching onion. Because um, the white Lisbon doesn't normally do anything for me. Thought I'd give it another try. I'm going to sow some of those. Sow row outside. Also got some chard going in. And I've also got two types of radish. One is a sparkler, that's your normal red type. I've got some of them growing outside, but I want a continuation of those into the autumn. And I've got a China white one, which I'm hoping will take us into the winter. And then there's three more besides that. I've got some spinach, uh, giant winter variety that I need to sow somewhere, find some space for. So as soon as I clear some plants from wherever on the plot, and I've got a bit more space, I will sow that, but that will be within this next week, 10 days. And I've got to try another sowing of parsley at home. I haven't had much luck with the parsley this year. I've got two or three plants and they're pathetic. So I need to get some more of that on. I want some parsley for over the winter period and some coriander as well. So I need to get them on. But all that said, that's enough sowing for one video. There's so much been done and that's brilliant. Just need to water it all now. But thanks everyone for viewing and watching and sticking to the end if you have. Hope, hopefully you have. And I'll see you all very, very soon. Ta-ra now.